Good morning, and welcome to all, on-site or online, who have come in the midst of this season of busyness and preparations to find a time and a space to slow down, to reflect on what our true preparation should be. We welcome you on this second Sunday of Advent. Immediately following worship, we will be decorating the, Christmas, the church for Christmas. Any and all are welcome to stay. It's going to be a great time. And we'll love your help and appreciate it so much. If you would like offering envelopes for 2020 plea, 2023, please let the church office know of your wishes and how many envelopes you will need. If you were unable to pick up your Advent devotional last Sunday, they're in a basket on the way out. If you're worshiping online, please just contact the church office if you'd like to receive one. There is a suggested donation of $4 for the booklets. If you would like to distribute Christmas cards to your Hazelwood friends without postage, there are two wooden boxes placed in Slanky Commons. You may drop your greeting cards in these. There are dividers for the alphabet to help make it easy. This is an easy and economical way to share greetings during the Advent season with all your friends. Our thanks to Bill Ritchie for the creation of these beautiful boxes. Bear with me. We had an addition to these announcements. Um, so, Christmas Day. What better way to celebrate the birth of Christ than to gather for worship on Christmas Day? Yes, Christmas is on a Sunday this year. As we've done in the past, we will gather for Christmas and quiche in Cartwright Hall. You may bring your favorite breakfast item to share with others or just come and enjoy the worship. If you decide to bring any food, please arrive early. We will worship at normal 10 o'clock time, so after the kids or the grandkids are already bored with their new toys, bundle them up, pack them in the car, bring them along to Hazelwood for Christmas and quiche and fellowship. Thank you, Kathy. Hello. Oh, it's a beautiful sound. Thank you. Yes, even in this Advent season of expectation of a newborn babe in a manger, the risen Christ's hello on Easter morning still rings in the air. It's the reason for the season. The birth of the Christ child gives rise to the hello of the resurrected Christ. We gather in worship to hear once again the call of God saying, hello. Hello in our lives, greeting us wherever we may be with the promise of a new life. Let us worship together.
Join me in the call to worship. Loving God, in this time of preparation and planning, we thank you for the hope and peace you unfailingly offer us. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. King of kings, Emmanuel, God with us. We are here to praise his name, and I invite you to join and sing with us in this praise song, King of kings. Will you join us? be seated. 
as we continue with our Advent worship, singing the hymn, Come, O Long Expected Jesus. Today's Advent reading comes from uh, Luke chapter 1. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. We light this candle believing that God's promises will be fulfilled. We light it with a willingness to see ourselves with God's eyes, to behold all the love and adoration that the Holy One has for us. Let's pray. God of blessings, illuminate our minds so that we may see ourselves with your loving eyes. Amen. Now let's join our voices in our Advent candle hymn. Good morning. 
Could I have all of our kids online or in person join me up here? Awesome. <laughs> so our scripture today is from Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. And in this passage, Isaiah is talking to people who have lost a lot. They feel pretty cut down and lifeless, kind of like a stump. They might even be afraid of what is happening in their lives. Have you guys ever felt really sad or scared? I have. Um, that's how the people that Isaiah was talking to felt. But Isaiah is also telling them that there's hope. He says from the stump of Jesse, a root will spring forth. And that kind of, this is what that picture looks like. So I, I didn't know that either. There's like different roots coming out of the stump. It's like new life. Um, so this means that even though right then the people didn't have a king who was from God and they were being ruled um, by other people, that God was still with them and that God promised to continue to be with them and one day send Jesus, a king that may not look like a king, but that would be a light and gift for our world. So that is part of our watching and waiting because we know that even when we feel scared or cut off or sad or lonely, that Jesus is with us and that we can have hope in God's promise. So just like that miracle of a shoot from a plant that comes out of a dead stump, or like the little plants that push through the cracks in the sidewalk, God is always with us, even when we don't know it or we're sad or scared. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for always being with us, even when we don't know it. Thank you for giving us hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Some Latin, lex orande est lex credendi. The way that you pray is the way that you believe. It's an ancient church proclamation, lex orandi est lex credendi. In mature prayer, there's a reciprocity between prayer life and one's lived life. What one prays for, one becomes. What one would like to become is what one prays for. When Paul writes to the followers of Christ in the Greek port town, Thessaloniki, he encourages them with the words, pray without ceasing. Does this mean we go through life with folded hands on bended knees, rubbing our knees raw? No. Make your prayer your life. Make your life your prayer. Let us pray and begin with our prayer hymn, Create in Me.
Let us continue in prayer. God, you are our God. And God, we are your people. Thank you for calling us into relationship with you and with each other. Thank you for your still, small voice. Thank you for stumping us. Pardon us, God, when we are oblivious of you, when we ignore your call for mercy, when we are all too quick to sacrifice the other. Forgive us. God, bless those who know no blessings. Heal those who hurt. Fill all that is empty. Urge us to a deeper sense of curious confidence. Beckon us onward to visit the inner sanctuary of our hearts, to practice vulnerability, to have our souls filled with all that is sacred. Break us open to your designs for creation, for we seek to know our place in this universe. Free of the bindings of despair and destruction, take away the distractions of the season and turn us to the joy-filled gift of the Christ child. For a shoot from the stump of all that was old promises a world of newness and a world turned upside down. Amen. Isaiah 11, written in the 8th century before the birth of Jesus, 800 years before Jesus was born. Today's scripture reading comes from the section of the book of Isaiah, which is known as 1st Isaiah. There are three Isaiahs in the prophet's book of Isaiah. Assyria threatens the borders of Judah. Some have already been taken into exile. Once again, some people are away from their homeland. Once again, some people face the prospect of being in bondage to a foreign power. Once again, the threat of violence looms over the people's lives. And yet, there is hope for deliverance. I will be reading Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion will feed together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. The weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Thanks. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but I find it increasingly difficult to find room in my schedule for the simplest of things, things that are fun to do, like having dinner with friends, or things that are good for us, like going to the gym. 
but especially during this time, it is difficult to make room. And so this song will encourage all of us to make room in our hearts.
Thank you, praise band. The scripture readings from the prophet Isaiah during the four Sundays of Advent are dreamy, hopeful, a bit on the wild side perhaps when it comes to explaining through metaphor and imagery how God works in a world that doesn't seem to be working too well. Isaiah dreams a dream where the desert blossoms and life abounds. A holy highway appears there leading straight to the holy land. A mountain is raised, a temple that all can see. The highest mountain in all the world. A young woman becomes pregnant and gives birth to Emmanuel, God with us. And this week, a dream of Isaiah's about a stump. The stump. A what? A stump. Yes, a stump. It's exciting. It's exhilarating. It's fascinating. All stumps are. It's a stump. A stump? Isaiah, it sounds like you've been dreaming after drinking too much Middle Eastern wine. A stump is a stump is a stump. I've had experience with stumps and with being stumped in my life. One of my life's near-death experiences involves a stump, believe it or not. I was thinning a stand of 40-foot poplar trees. No, this is my story. They were 100 to 120-foot tall trees. This was at my home in the hills, the wooded hills, outside Martinsville. One tree that I sawed through didn't fall as planned, but instead tilted a little towards its neighbors and got caught up in the other trees and then settled back onto its stump. Harumph, I thought, a bit puzzled, or stumped. Should I cut it again? That could get messy, what with all the angles and how the tree may slide off the stump. I know my 10 acres in the hills provided me with endless opportunities to use my 4x4 Pathfinder. In the hills, the Pathfinder was more than a Pathfinder. It was a pathmaker, a load bearer, a hill climber, even in the deepest snow. And so my thinking went, looking for any and all reasons to use my 4x4, Patty, which was my name for my Pathfinder, Patty, would become a tree mover. No stump is going to stump me. For those of you who put your pastor on a pedestal or on a stump, observe what happens next. I pulled my 20 feet of high-grade chain out of the back end of Patty, looped one end around the tree, just above where it rested on the stump, berating the stump for having the audacity to get in the way of my tree felling. I looped the other end around Patty's front end pulling hook, again rebuking the stump, climbed into the cab, shut the door thinking, I'll show that stump for getting in my way. I turned the key, put Patty in four-wheel drive low, and put her in reverse, easing Patty back just a little bit until the chain was taut between Patty and the tree. And with one more scolding of the impudent stump, I stepped on the gas. Well, what happens next happened very slowly. I entered into that altered dream time space, perhaps the time space where Isaiah was when Isaiah did his writing about his dreams. I saw everything around me clearly, and I see the time and the flow of time and all the possibilities of how time could unfold. I see the chain pull the bottom of the tree off the presumptuous stump, but not as I had planned. Maybe I misjudged the power of Patty. Somehow I remember holding this bizarre notion that Patty's power would be so enormous that the bottom of the tree would just flip up and away and the top of the tree would come flying down to the ground. And Patty and I would be dragging this 40-foot, no, 100-foot poplar <laughs> along the ground. Just a dream. The bottom of the tree came off the stump which remained unmoved, and proceeded to fall. No, that's not right. The tree just dropped one foot. Boom, bonk. Oh, great, I thought. Now the tree will remain pinned up high by its neighbors, 
and I'll have to repeat the whole process again and again and again. I'm a tad annoyed. But I'll probably have to take the tree down a few feet by a few feet at a time. I gazed up through the windshield, pondering my next move, then smiled, seeing that the top of the tree had worked its way free from the limbs of its neighbors. I remembered slapping the dashboard, cheering, taunting the stump. No stump's going to stump me and Patty. The tree is coming down. I paused in my celebration. The top of the poplar tree was tilting towards me. This was not planned for. I remember thinking the crazy thought that maybe I could just throw the last few seconds in reverse, like I could put Patty in reverse. Obviously, I live to tell the story of the stump, Patty, and me. Patty survived, too, for another 100,000 miles or so. The tree, well, it missed us. By an inch, falling right along the driver's side door. I had to exit through the passenger side to get out. The stump, well, I got all caught up in simply being alive after a near tragic incident that I forgot about the stump. Well, stumps are funny things. Stumps are pretty powerful things. For the most part, it's we human beings who make stumps and we think that's the end of that tree. Or we use stumps to sit on, like the old man in Shel Stilberstein's The Giving Tree. But stumps are greater than just stumps. A stump is a symbol of God. A stump is a part of God's nature. You think the line of Jesse is over? Just a stump? Think again. A stump is the law of God and how God works. A stump is like the kingdom of God. A funny thing about God and stumps, they're never down and out like we think they are. I finished thinning my stand that early winter day, thankful not to be squished. And I gave no more thought to the few stumps I created, being more concerned with cutting the trees that I had felled and making some firewood stacks. Spring came and passed before I took any notice of the stand of trees in that corner of the property. Come early summer, what did I see? Not the four or five poplar stumps that I had created the previous winter, but four or five large poplar bushes. The poplars had coppiced. Each stump had several mini poplars growing out of the edges of the trunks. Amazing. This is Isaiah's dream. Not just one shoot, but many shoots. People in Isaiah's time knew the value of stumps, of coppicing trees. People had lived in the Near East for so long that most forests no longer existed, but there were coppiced forests, managed forests of shoots growing out of stumps. They coppice trees for charcoal to forge iron in the growing Iron Age. Wood from coppice trees was used for building materials, furniture, fences, baskets. Shoots coming out of stumps serve many purposes and could serve many people. This is what Isaiah is dreaming about when he writes, A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse. Folks knew that shoots out of stumps have many uses. The shoot will meet everyone's need, no matter what those needs may be. Have you ever seen a coppiced woodland? Not only is there new growth on a stump, but more light could come down in from the canopy since the canopy is no longer there. The forest floor abounds with new and diverse growth. A coppice tree grows faster than a tree that grows from a seed because it already has the existing root system in place. The coppice shoots can be trained as they grow. 
Coppicing lengthens the life of a tree. There are coppice trees, I understand, in England that are over a thousand years old. We could point to many things in our lives and call them stumps. Lifeless, good for nothing, believing God's work is done. Or we could declare, we are God's stumps. Chopped off, sawed off, hacked off, broken off, aged stumps. And God always comes with an and. We have roots and we have traditions. We have a history that has preceded us, that continues to sustain and nourish us as persons and as a church. Isaiah's dream is a dream that declares God's work is never done. Maybe saying, I'm stumped, isn't such a bad thing. For a shoot shall and will and is coming out of the root of Jesse. Amen. I invite you to stand if you would like and join us in singing our communion song in the bleak midwinter. seated. Over 2,500 years ago, Isaiah cried out to the people of Israel, prepare the way of the Lord. John the Baptist, the same cry 500 years later, prepare the way of the Lord. The way has been prepared. The promise of God with us has been fulfilled. 
Here at this table, we are welcomed, known, and forgiven by the boundless grace of God. Do not come because you must. Come to the table because you may. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our days now are being spent in busy preparation for the holidays. In these days of preparation, prepare our hearts and our spirits for your coming into our lives. Let the bread that we break remind us that you are the source of our life and all our energy. As we gather at this table to drink from this cup, help us to know that you are here, yet help us to wait expectantly for your work and word to be fulfilled in our lives. Help us to grow in grace and faith that we might receive the Christ, who is the true goal of all our preparation and our anticipation, the Christ, who would be the perfect example to guide us. We ask this and offer the prayer that your Holy Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, blessed it and gave thanks for it, and then gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And after supper, he took a cup in the same manner, giving thanks, and then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink ye all of it. This is the cup of a new covenant.
Amen. The amazing gift of one who fully embodied God's intention for all of humanity prompts us to make a grateful response. In Christ, we have known a love that will not let us go. Through our gifts, let us share that love with our community and with the world. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we are gathered here today, the second Sunday of Advent, preparing our hearts and minds for the coming of the Messiah. We thank you for your steadfast love and forgiveness. Help us to love others as you love us. Help us to be your light in this world. We thank you for all your good gifts given to us each day. Today, we bring our tithes and offerings and ask that you multiply them. Use them so that your love is spread through helping others. May we all rejoice and be glad, giving you all the praise and glory as we go forth this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. go from here taking joy to the world.
invite you to receive the benediction. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God's face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up God's countenance upon you and give you peace and give you Thank you.